Coming to you live from a Zoom call, this is Thick Man Inc. We are back at it, here with your host, top 100 Madden player Tristan Kilgannon and ESPN featured athlete Isaiah Ashley. It has been somewhat difficult to coordinate and finally get another podcast together during our finals and the corona, but we are back to bring you our thoughts on the quarterbacks taking in this year's first round. Starting off with the most controversial pick of the NFL draft, Packers fans are swinging their arms in the air. Isaiah, what would you think when they announced Jordan Love? Or what did you think when it came across your phone if you weren't watching at the time? I have one thought about Jordan Love. Jordan Love is the best pick of the 2020 NFL draft. He has a cannon of an arm. He has a 10 and a half inch hand. And he has plenty of time to mature behind Aaron Rodgers. Of the first round QBs taken, Love is certainly the Ross, the guy who needs the most time to develop. He's kind of like Patrick Mahomes in a way, where you don't just throw him in there. You don't feed him to the wolves. You got to let him mature. It's like a steak. You got to season him. You got to get that dry rub in there. You got to let him marinate for a day or two. And after the first season or two behind the great Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love will storm into the league, much like Aaron Rodgers did, coming from behind Favre, and take center stage as one of the best quarterbacks within his first season. I can't wait to see it. Actually, I can because I'm a Vikings fan. I'm upset again. We've got another 20-plus years of QB futility up in Minnesota, and they've got Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers. I'm upset. This is, I mean, something you said, which I've disagreed with the discussion about this topic uh, very much so, is that people who compare it to the Brett Favre, that it was like when Aaron Rodgers got drafted behind Brett Favre, and no, it's nothing like that. The quarterback, the GM who drafted Aaron Rodgers to back up Brett Favre even said so himself. They were sitting there at 21 or whatever Aaron Rodgers picked. He was the best player left on their board. They... He was also someone rumored to go the first overall pick of that draft and happened to fall to 20. People had Jordan, a lot, bunch of teams that Jordan Love ranked as a second-round quarterback, had him ranked even lower, some maybe a bit higher. Obviously, the Packers did. But the Packers have a Hall of Fame quarterback. They traded up to pick someone that people, there's two other quarterbacks in the draft that were ranked higher than him. They traded up for him. So it's not the same thing. And Aaron Rodgers has four years left on Four years left on his deal, I think. So it's nothing like the Brett Favre and Rogers situation. It's exactly like the Brett Favre. Aaron no, it's Rogers. not. You have one great quarterback already in there starting, and you have another quarterback taken in the first round who is the heir apparent, who will clearly not play day one, not play day two, not play year one, probably not play year two. It's the exact same thing. Say, oh, different situation, different all that, but in the grand scheme of things, it's the same thing. You didn't even it's you a didn't quarterback address taken to replace. Aaron Rodgers. You didn't address. You don't any- waste a first round pick on Jordan Love if you don't think that there is a good chance that Jordan Love will be your franchise quarterback by the time it's all said and done. Isaiah, they did not pick Jordan who- Love to trade him. I, somehow I feel that if this if this was a Giants who had Aaron Rodgers and the Giants traded up for Jordan Love, you'd be tearing into them right now. But because it's well, not, the Giants have never had a player at quarterback of Aaron Rodgers caliber starting right there. And second off. Probably but, wouldn't because this is a good pick. Aaron Rodgers is getting towards the end of his ages. He's an older quarterback. He's had some issues with the team. He's got a bad relationship with his family. There are rumors of him in the clubhouse having issues with the coach. I don't know if I can say, oh, this is that true, that true, this true, all that. I don't know. But I know there are rumors. I know that there is no danger in taking Jordan Love here. They were a good team last year. They're going to be a playoff team again, pretty much regardless of circumstances, because I feel the NFC North is weak. But they will be a playoff team. Nothing is lost by this pick, and the future is gained. And Aaron Rodgers, by the way, was picked at 24. Same I mean, that doesn't matter. We don't, And we don't deal in rumors, Isaiah. We deal in straight facts. It is a fact that, is that a when, lie. when Aaron Rodgers was picked... He, uh, Brett Varf had already been discussing some level of retirement. It is a fact that he was being discussed as a first overall pick in that year's draft, and he somehow fell all the way back to the Packers, and he was a very high-ranked prospect in that draft. Jordan Love, you can say what you want about him, but he wasn't the best quarterback in this draft. He wasn't the second-best quarterback in this draft. You had Joe Burrow, who had statistically the greatest season ever. Uh, Tua, who was not been, there at 26. Tua, who had one of the Not highest, there. regarded as one of the best prospects ever. So he wasn't even the best quarterback in this draft. And you're trading up when you have 
it's it's not the same thing as a Brett Favre situation. And the GM, the you GM who drafted say, Aaron Rodgers, know said the that best himself. In the draft. You can't say that because you don't know. Alex Smith was regarded as the best quarterback in the uh, not by everyone. Draft. Oh, Aaron Rodgers thought about it as the number one overall pick. Yes, he was. He was pretty much consensus number one overall. There are rumors of other teams. He's maybe trading for the pick, or maybe San Francisco picks Rodgers. So the consensus was no, Alex there was Smith discussion. Was the no, one there was pick. He obviously hasn't had as good a career as Aaron Rodgers. It is foolish to say that just because you were picked higher and more people think you'll be better, you will it have a better career. It is foolish to say, but... And credit to the Bengals. They had to make that pick. They had to pick Burrow. Credit to the Dolphins. They had to pick Tua. But Jordan Love will probably have a better career than at least one and maybe both those guys. I think it's ignorant to say that Jordan Love, the situation... And I'm not... This isn't me saying him as a prospect at all, but his situation is much different from the Varv rogers situation because Rodgers has shown no signs of retirement. Varv is showing signs of retirement. Uh, rogers has four, just signed a new contract that's up with some of the highest in the rest of the league. So I think at the end of the day, you can't compare the two situations. You can argue that it was a good pick because of Love's talent and backing up for the future... But it's not near the same situation. How many seasons do you think Aaron Rodgers waited, he waited on three the seasons for Brett on the bench? To get on out of the way. Wait three seasons. Jordan and Love do you think that's realistic to today? Assuming that Aaron Rodgers plays out the rest of his contract, he will have to wait for. That is a one season difference. Do you think it's realistic for a quarterback in today's There's... NFL to wait four seasons or three seasons to play? Do you think that's realistic? When you're waiting behind Aaron Rodgers, yes. Well, I mean, I and let's talk about why. Jordan Love is not regarded as an elite level prospect out of this draft. Why three quarterbacks are taken ahead of him? He played at Utah State. That is a takeaway from him as a player. To me, that says he's loyal to his team. He could have easily transferred after his sophomore year, and he was a late bloomer. He matured later. He was not regarded as one of the top QB prospects as he should have coming out of high school. Another reason he fell? He had 17 interceptions. And after breaking down his film, you can explain a lot of those interceptions. I counted. There were three times on a turnaround route or a curl route that his wide receiver just stopped point blank and the cornerback run past him and picked the ball. And if the receiver takes one or two steps, that's a catch. There were three or four long balls thrown in garbage time or down big against teams like LSU had multiple long ball picks there where he's just trying to force something, trying to get back in the game, which were interceptions. Those are bad throws, but you can understand them getting the context. He was drilled twice on interceptions. There was a horrendous uncalled pass interference play where the receiver practically got tackled and the ball was intercepted. And there were many 60-40 balls, which his receivers should have gotten. The receivers had a better chance to get, but the cornerbacks just beat them. And that's because those receivers are Utah State products. All in all, it's roughly 10 of his 17 interceptions. I could say it could be blamed on other people. And I'm not going to say, oh, he should have only had 7 picks. He should have maybe had 10. But 10 is a whole lot better than 17. That interception problem is why he fell. Another reason, small school. Teams do not like drafting quarterbacks out of small schools. It's very rare they go high. Carson Wentz is an exception to that that, because he went early from a very small school. But since then, you won't see those guys beating out the big guys. There was no chance for Jordan Love to beat out guys like Tua. Do you think think Jordan Love is a better prospect than Joe Burrow or Tua? They're different prospects. I think it's much like Patrick Mahomes in the sense that he needs time to mature. He'll get way more time to mature than Patrick Mahomes did. But Jordan Love is a great prospect. He's got a better arm strength than Joe Burrow. He's better on the deep ball. His arm strength is amazing. His hands are bigger, and I think he's a better athlete. I don't know if he's... And he's got time to develop all the intangible and mental stuff behind I think Rogers Burrow is well and above Jordan Love as far as making decision making and ability to throw uh, balls into windows and putting touch on the ball. I think you're downplaying interceptions. Well, it's a good thing Jordan Love's got three or four years to develop. <laughs> well, then. Jordan Love gets to go to college again, basically. That's if he NFL gets level. three to four years. Maybe Rodgers demands a trade. At the end of the day, 17 interceptions is 17 interceptions. It doesn't matter. If it was because his receiver didn't step up, it was obviously still thrown into tight coverage or a play to a point where the corner could have made is, a if he was play on the ball. For LSU, that tight coverage is a ten-yard gain. Do you blame all of uh, Daniel Jones's fumbles and interceptions? All on his Daniel fumbles Jones are definitely year? his fault. He needs to fucking hold on to the ball. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's a stupid take. It- Daniel Jones does have a fumble problem. At the same time, if he's getting hit from behind as he's throwing, I don't blame him for the fumble. He had plenty of fumbles, which were his fault, but blaming a quarterback for all his fumbles is stupid. That's why I sometimes question... Some question, 
But a lot I don't of blame a, a lot Foster. of Daniel Jones's fumbles were his fault, having problems with sensing pressure and stepping up in the pocket. A majority of them were that. There's sometimes he tried to take off and run and then got the ball punched so, out of his hand. What you're saying is not all of them, though. Maybe like, it was a couple. Were in fact, but I mean, Jones's also fault. 17 interceptions on a college level at Utah State isn't exactly something pretty to say see especially when he only threw 20 touchdowns and yet he was still picked in the first round of the nfl draft it's almost like nfl gms have an i mean i think talent. he's talented jordan loves immeasurables are off the chart too like the arm strength thing that's used the hands that's used the tough firm body the ability to Isaiah, play in hostile climates you, like Isaiah, Utah, i know that's you like huge. your they still play outside i know you like your men with big hands and firm bodies <laughs> I do, I do. It's, I love quarterbacks like that. That's why I hate Kirk Cousins. He's got a feminine waist and a feminine <laughs> arm. But we were getting sidetracked from the point. We Any, have other no, I want to address. About. In closing, I think Jordan Love. I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk. I think Jordan Love was the steal of the draft. I think in three or four years, when he is playing his first meaningful minutes as a starting quarterback, you will come to truly appreciate this pick. And it will be like Brett Favre handing the reins over to Aaron Rodgers. Unconsensual but still effective. I've kind of had to take uh, a p- more of an imposing view than I actually have on this situation because of how drastic Isaiah's opinion is. But I want to briefly address um, the people who are saying that this is ridiculous just because they were one game away from the Super Bowl and they should be giving Aaron Rodgers a bunch of talent. They, they look at People are looking at Tom Brady getting offensive line help in Tampa with Tristan Wirfs falling to them, and they're thinking – why aren't we drafting an offensive line or a receiver? Devontae Adams is the only receiver that's receiving threat, and they did lose Brian Belaga to the Chargers. I understand why they would want an offensive line or receiver, but they need to remember what their team was. They were regarded as an awful 13-3 and team. I mean, that's kind of semantics. So you won 13 games still. And Aaron Rodgers had for him what was a very lackluster year. They should have lost to Seattle in the division round if Seattle's whole backfield wasn't in a hospital. And Raheem Mostert ran for 220 yards and four touchdowns in the NFC Championship, and they lost 37 to 21, and they were losing 34 to seven at the end of the third quarter. So I think Packers fans need to kind of realize that. While it may have been nice to get an offensive tackle or get a receiver, maybe pick um, up T. Higgins or Denzel Mims with wh- whatever pick they had in the at the end of the first round, how much is that going to help when they got mauled and was regarded as one of the most fake 13-3 and three teams ever? I think you're debating semantics at this point. It doesn't really matter that much the value of any one pick. I would agree with you on that, but... I can understand the Packers fans being upset that they are not making picks for immediate success. They're idiots because they don't understand the long game, but they have a reason to be angry if their brains were that small. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I guess you're kind of also happy because the Vikings did draft a receiver to support their quarterback. Yes, the Vikings have an amazing history of drafting wide receivers such as Cordell Patterson and Laquan Treadwell in the first round. I'm overjoyed at that. Anyway, what, but moving on. what quarterback do you want to get to next, Isaiah? Let's talk about the man who was taken number one overall, Joe Burrow. And the thing is with Joe Burrow, I have no idea how to feel about him. On one hand, he's got one of the most impressive, maybe the most impressive passing season of any player in college football history. On the other hand, you can see guys like that, Johnny Football, go from sure thing NFL talent to bust status and the fact that Joe Burrow basically played with the Miami Dolphins last year in terms of talent around him. He had by far the best supporting cast of any QB taken. So some of that might be uh, attributed to that. I don't know how he'll handle the shift from LSU, the warm climate, into the colder, much more frigid Cincinnati. I don't know how he's going to handle being beaten up, didn't play football professionally or at the collegiate level in Ohio. I don't know how he's going to handle, though, getting beaten up. He's going to go from one of the best O-lines in all of college football on that monstrous LSU group, flash a picture up on the screen of them right there. God, those guys are big. To the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line, who they didn't take an O-lineman until, I believe, the sixth round, and the O-line was very shaky last year, and one of the big reasons Andy Dalton went down and stayed down. 
So I don't think he's in a position to succeed. I don't think many number one overall picks at the quarterback position are in an immediate position to succeed. I wish him luck. I just don't know if he's going to have any. I, uh, Joe Burrow, I think someone from the island of Taiwan could have predicted him going first overall. It wasn't a hard prediction to make. The Bengals got the best QB in the draft. And, of course, like you said, their offensive line is not great. It's not great. But they did. They are building an offense around Joe Burrow, skill position-wise, that consists of John Ross, a great third option, T. Higgins, A.J. Green. Well, he, John Ross will be a fourth option at this point. And they do have Joe Mixon in the backfield. And they have Tyler Boyd. So there's a bunch of options they're going to have receiving, running, and I think they're building something around Burrow. Like you said, offensive line is going to be a problem, possibly. And the people that say that think he's not going to be that good because he's playing on a roster with tons of NFL talent, had 14 players taking in this draft. Well, he also beat a lot of other rosters that have tons of NFL talent. Ohio State had 10 players taken. Alabama had 9 players taken. Clemson had 7 players t- taken. He lit up Clemson, passed for 463 yards, 5 touchdowns on the biggest stage. So he's proven that he can perform when it counts. In the national championship, he even hurt his ribs at one point, And he didn't know if he broke his ribs. He also beat Tua in Alabama, who were regarded as supposed to be the best college team last year so I think he's proven that he can compete and beat NFL talent of course he had NFL talent on his own team but so did all the other teams that he was playing in regards to what you said about oh they're building a special offense not special remember but last they year when the Cleveland going. Browns had Baker Mayfield Nick Chubb Odell Beckham Jr. Jarvis Landry and David Njoku and sucked yeah that's it's going to be a worse case of that in Cincinnati this year if they don't get some O-line I don't out. think the that's O-line going to be – still terrible. I don't think that's – You're right. They're not going to have as much success. They're going to win less games. I don't think that's going to be worst case because the Browns were seen as a Super Bowl team, and when the Bengals win five or six games, it's going to be seen as a success. I don't know how you can see five or six wins as a success, particularly when you have – a QB prospect who is highly regarded, talked about in the same breath as guys like Andrew Luck under center. He's but not. But hey, I guess if you want Joe Burrow to uh, injure his ribs again, keep neglecting the O line. This is why I hate the Bengals sometimes. They had a really good contender playoff team after the Vontaze Burford incident, after the Pac Man Jones incident. It fell apart because they wouldn't invest at all in their O line. Andy Dalton got creamed every play. It's what's going to happen. And again. Isaiah, you forget very, they don't have an indoor practice facility. Don't have an indoor practice facility. Their coach is old school and hard nosed, but like Matt Patricia up in Detroit. Their owner. I but, mean, they have a new coach now. He won a whopping two yeah, games he's last be hard year. Still, but I just don't see immediate success in this team's future. I Maybe didn't say it'll be it a either. Peyton Manning and the Colts situation. Maybe they build slowly their future and become a great team. That awaits to be seen. I mean, AJ Green. Anyone who says they know that Joe Burrow is going to be a sure thing bust or a sure thing star, they don't know what they're talking about. Only fools make guarantees about prospects. I mean, AJ Green's AJ Green. T. Higgins had 1,100 yards in college last year and was was one of Clemson's best receivers. John Ross, one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, showed some flashes last year, but he's not good enough not durable enough to be a number two or number one option. And they have Tyler Boyd, who's now had 2,000-yard seasons in a row. So, I mean, I think they, with Andy Dalton as his QB, so I think they definitely have the skill position talent to give Burrow success. But like you said, their offensive line is a little rough, as I think Dalton is one of the most sacked quarterbacks. He barely played, but I disagree with you on the strength of that offensive group. I don't think A.J. Green's ever been in the same breadth as guys like Julio Odell and A.B., but that's beside the point. We have other quarterbacks to talk about. Speaking of, the man, the myth, the legend, the Hawaiian, flying, styling, smiling pick, Tua Tungavalova, goes to the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins had to make this pick. Even if Tua Tungavalova had his legs amputated and was walking on popsicle sticks, the Dolphins would have had to make this pick. It's what their fan base demanded. They started the hashtag tank for Tua. They needed to get Tua Tungavaloa. And they were very fortunate to get him at the pick they did. Or they would have been if his leg hadn't fallen apart. If you believe the reports from various doctors that Joe, or that Tua Tungavaloa is ready to play day one, that's your choice. I don't. I don't think many people in the Dolphins organization do. But 
we'll have to wait and see. He has a huge upside and a huge downside. The downside is he's out of the league in a few years because of injury. The upside, he somehow stays healthy, has a Brett Favre-esque career. We're talking about Brett Favre a lot today. And he's one of the great NFL quarterbacks. I don't see that happening. I think the Dolphins are a risky team to play with, and he is a risky player to pick, and it just won't work out. I mean, I've stated in the past why I think taking Tua was extremely risky. Uh, I really, really hope that for Tua's sake that he gets to sit behind Ryan Fitzpatrick for a year because even if, even if that he is ready to play day one, I don't think he should play day one. I think he should really take a full year to be absolutely 100 million percent healthy and be able to run as fast as he can, have his hip while it may be ready. The doctors may say, oh, you can play. I don't think they should take that approach. They're dealing with a quarterback who's supposed to be extremely talented. So I think they definitely need to put him behind uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I hope for Tua's sake that's what happens. I mean, he can play day one. He may have success, but on the Dolphins, are they really going to be winning a Super Bowl next year? I don't think so, so I think you can definitely manage with Ryan Fitzpatrick. And the problem with Tua also is that he thinks he's faster than he actually is. He All his injuries, he's running away from two defenders trying to roll out of the pocket, gets tackled, hip pops out. So both ankle injuries he needed to have surgery on probably, I don't know, I think it had something to do with getting caught from behind. So that's a problem. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Russell Wilson. I think the people that compare him to, oh, he's the next Russell Wilson are ridiculous because Russell Wilson is a world-class athlete in his own right. And some random note on him, which I was kind of surprised about considering the way he um, caused a revolution kind of of the Alabama offense with throwing the ball over the place and having a, a quarterback be the centric part is that he had the lowest Wonderlick score. Uh, that was kind of surprising to me. So, I mean, it doesn't necessarily def- define uh, success. I mean, Lamar Jackson had the uh, same Wonderlick score as him and won an MVP. So, but then again, Lamar Jackson's probably the most athletic quarterback ever to be in the NFL. So, I don't know what the Wonderlick score well, says. Michael Vick would like a word. I don't but... know if... Um, <laughs> His the problem with Wonder Wonderlick, Lick I'll step in for you. Dan Marino had an infamously low Wonderlick score. He was not the most athletic quarterback ever to be in the NFL. I think his uh, career worked out just fine. Also, please don't say stuff like, oh, he thinks he's Lamar Jackson, he thinks he's Russell Wilson. I didn't say he thinks he he's... Had... Don't talk about him thinking he's a running quarterback. He knows he's not. I said he, he thinks he's more athletic than he actually is. No, he doesn't. He attempted to rush the ball 57 times last year. Dude had 190 rushing yards. I'm pretty confident that Tua Tungvalu is well aware of the 40 speed he's putting out. He knows he's not a running if quarterback. he just threw the ball away sometimes and didn't take the big hit, he wouldn't be sitting here with a fucking dislocated hip and two ankle surgeries. Eli Manning uh, made a career off of taking sacks and just falling down. And won two Super Bowls and two Super Bowl MVPs. The Giants' defense won two Super Bowls and should have won two Super Bowl MVPs, but they won't give the MVPs to position groups. But I digress. That is a different tangent, which will be discussed one day. Tua is not the most durable quarterback, but if this most recent air injury hasn't done anything to convince him that maybe he should run less, I don't know it will. Another reason you mentioned him sitting for a year, I agree with that, but for different reasons. I find myself saying this about all the teams we were talking about with high picks. The O-line is terrible. The O-line is god-awful in Miami. It's not good. It's not quite as bad as Cincinnati, but it ain't special. It is bottom 10 in the league in quite a lot of things. And if I'm him, I'm waiting until that O-line is at least average, just somewhat above average before I step on the field. I don't need to get hit from behind. I don't need to get sacked. I don't need a 330-pound defensive tackle falling on my surgically repaired hip. I mean, No, thank you. The, Let Ryan Fitzpatrick have that happen to him. He can protect himself with his beard. They did draft offensive tackle with the 18th overall pick and an offensive uh, tackle or, I don't know, I don't know if he's a guard or tackle, doesn't say here, um, with he's the 39th the dude overall from, pick. He's uh, Fayette or Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette. Hunt. Yeah. I'd say that's a good step, but those are two rookies. Give it a year. Give it longer. Play it safe. I'm agreeing with you they shouldn't play for a year. I'm not agreeing for the same reasons. The O, play it safe card. Well, if you keep playing it safe, you're going to find yourself out of a job. 
Uh, and that's well, it. Well, I'm not saying... Play it so you have protection. Don't go out there and die for the Miami Dolphins. They don't deserve that. <laughs> Dolphins fans don't deserve that. Dolphins fans don't deserve anything. Damn. I've had to hear about that 17-0 season. Like, that team was an all-time world-beater team my entire football life. And I'm frustrated at that. Video for a different day, though. <laughs> but do you have anything else to say about Tua? No, nah, that's pretty much all I got on him. Should we, you want to move on to Justin Herbert now? Finally, we are talking about Justin Herbert. First off, who in their right mind would go to the NFL with the name Herbert? The second I'm 18 years old, I'm going straight to the courthouse, straight downtown, and changing my name to Justin Smith. Herbert is an all-time bad NFL quarterback name. Quarterbacks with weak names like that don't win Super Bowl. He should consider getting that changed. It's also a lot of lettering to put on the back of a Charge jersey. Second, this is a map pick to me. The Chargers had to replace Phillip Rivers, and they weren't going to be in the position to get Trevor Lawrence next year, so I see why they took it. But I just don't see Justin Herbert having an impact immediately. He screams average to me. He looks average. His college career, when you compare it to other high-level picks, is average. And he's just kind of there. Don't you he's think he's a good athlete, a deceptive athlete? He's the fastest white quarterback I've seen in quite some time. Maybe even faster than Josh Allen, maybe not. Yeah, I, I, but that four six eight forty is something. That kind of shocked me. I think he's definitely <laughs> a lot more athletic up. than people are giving him credit for, and will kind of when he gets to step on the field, maybe he gets to step on the field right away. I think that'll shock shock a few people. But Jose, did you watch the movie Draft Day? <sighs> Yes, the movie about the Cleveland Browns. Don't you yes, think he I looks eerily day. similar to Bo Callahan in draft day? <laughs> Was Bo Callahan the quarterback who fell? Yes. Uh, Bo Callahan had a better haircut and better name than this guy. <laughs> but like he if, looks... name, if Bo Callahan was named Justin Herbert, he would have gone the second round. <laughs> he looks so much like him, though. It makes me think that he's not going to be any good. And I think they're we'll both... flash a side-by-side -side comparison on the screen. Let us know down in the comments. In the movie, I think Bo Callahan wound up being taken... Oh, no, he might it might have been fourth. Who cares? It's a movie. But The Browns will not actually make good picks like that. That was the very same year they drafted Johnny Manziel, and we see how well that worked out. <laughs> but, I mean, you talked about him being average. He, over his four-year career at Oregon, he never really progressed he threw for four five eight six interceptions in order from 2016 to 2019 his throwing uh completion percentage never really got any better in 2018 it was below 60 percent at 59.4 2019 last year he was at 66.8 percent he threw 19 15 29 32 touchdowns every year rating quarterback rating was always about in the same range and in a video, uh, Brett Coleman, uh, Isaiah, you know who he is, he did an in-depth video on Herbert's decision-making. Check it out if you haven't already. And Herbert leads, his, the description. Herbert leads his receivers into taking some monstrous hits, and he misses wide-open receivers occasionally. He leads his receivers into trouble, doesn't throw into windows. So I think that's going to be a problem that could develop into being a problem. But, I mean, Josh Allen has made – some lack of decision making work in the NFL. He's been very good. So hopefully, something Justin Herbert can do, but over four years, he didn't show that much development, which says something about him or the coaching staff at Oregon. Here's why I hate looking at stats like that. If you want to speak about stats, Tim Tebow statistically was a better passer, not a better quarterback, a better passer than Justin Herbert. And I don't think anyone's really arguing that Justin Herbert will be a better NFL-level passer than Tim Tebow. You can't judge everything by stats. And while I think he remains stagnant for much of his collegiate career, I don't know if that's a bad thing. He's going to be average. I don't want to talk about him too much. He's not going to be Phillip Rivers. He's just going to be a guy who's there, whose upside is Alex Smith, and whose downside is Alex Smith in Washington. His upside is Josh Man's Allen. Average. We don't even know who Josh Allen is yet. Exactly. <laughs> Josh Allen. We know exactly who Josh Allen is. Josh Allen is a second second best running quarterback in the NFL. But that's beside the point. Uh, he's a b We're going to get really off topic if we start talking about Josh Allen and his greatness. 
<laughs> he's got the best team and best card in Ultimate Team right now. <laughs> well, yeah, he deserves it. But are there is there any other th- quarterbacks you would like to discuss? I don't think. I mean, that I think that's bit, that's all the first round quarterbacks. There was Fromm in the later round, but you know, no one really cares. No about No one him. cares. No one cares about Herbert. He was taken sixth. But anyway, that has been our video. Remember, Jordan Love will be the GOAT in five years. This is Thick Man Inc., and we are signing off.